Hi, how are you two? We're doing very well, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm just to see ourselves yet. So, um, are we are we visible? Are we? Uh... Yeah, I've got you yeah. positioned on the screen. Fantastic. <laughs> I saw that you got attacked by some wasps yesterday. So. Yeah, I, that's why I'm a bit late because um, <laughs> Nickel, who who, who um, we work with on Story of Dialog, um, lost his glasses. So I thought the very least I could do is go out and see if I could find them. But I have to say, I was very wary of, of more wasps, but oh. the last there were no wasps. Oh, Everything okay. was back to normality. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you so much for letting me interview you both. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> um, I don't know if you just want to introduce yourself, first of all. Yeah, I'm, I'm Charles Sasson, the CEO of Revolution. Uh, I'm Tony Warriner. I'm uh, one of the founders of Charles and generally a uh, programmer and designer. Okay, thank you. And um, I've just checked on Kickstarter and Broken Sword 5 is at $528,809. <laughs> so, and it's got eight days to go, so obviously you've smashed the target. And you've smashed one of the um, stretch targets as well. So do you think that you'll be going for the 650 and um, everyone doing the order of the goat and getting it up there? <laughs> I think the order of the goat is definitely going to be in whatever total we get to. Yeah. yeah, the order of the goat is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who came up with that, but uh, <laughs> it's just just such a great idea. Yeah, and definitely. One of the things is one of the things that's really nice about Kickstarter is the exchange that we've had with fans, um, and it's just it's really valuable. So, you know, fairly early on, we felt that you know George's face was not quite right. Um, and the modelers looked at it and went, yeah, yeah, actually, they're absolutely right. And so we, 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 we made some minor changes, um, and people now are very happy. Uh, it's obviously, you know, raising the funding is very important, but uh, there are many other benefits as well. And certainly the ability to communicate with people and get their feedback is, is really, really valuable. Mm, yeah. Whose idea was it to start the Kickstarter? Well, I think probably all of us, because when Tim Schafer and Dolphine were so successful um, with their project, now they, they have a huge advantage in California, of course, or in America. Yeah. Uh, because Kickstarter in particular requires you to be an American company. Yeah. Um, and so this is actually uh, being uh, run through Revolution Software Inc. Rather, re rather than Revolution Software Limited. Right. Um, so it's totally different, absolutely above board. Yeah. But uh, difficult to, to, to do though for a European company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we had to, to jump through hoops. And, and obviously, we wanted to make sure that it was totally legitimate because um, we didn't want to run into problems further down the line. Yeah, I did wonder about that. And I think they are launching Kickstarter in the UK soon. So yes. you've, you've kind of sort of led everyone and um, introducing the UK people to it because I don't think many people in the UK had seen Kickstarter before anyway. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, um, uh, Stainless did a, a good um, Kickstarter project with Come Again, um, but that was very much appealing to, you know, quite hard, cool, visceral oh, right. uh, audience, whereas Broken Sword is, uh, they're much brighter, much brighter audience, mm -hmm. uh, much better fans than mm -hmm. uh, than people who play more violent games, <laughs> I, I would say. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, what is Broken Sword 5 actually about? We can't tell you. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> um, what's inspired you for the story for Broken Sword 5? <laughs> okay, that's much, that's much uh, fairer, fairer question. <laughs> um, well, f first of all, it's probably worth saying that um, it's not going to be Templar based, uh, based around the Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. um, the Knights Templar are a wonderful subject and we feel that we we were very much a part of creating the zeitgeist. Um, the ludicrous book, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, mm -hmm. um, which of course Dan Brown bought into, book like into Design and Sinker, um, was actually a very interesting start for the, for, for the Knights Templar because it it gave a lot of very interesting information, which was true, and also a lot of total nonsense. Um, and we, we obviously featured them first, we, we featured them, and the idea of 
their history resonating into the modern day um, in, in Broken Sword 1. And, and then uh, after the Da Vinci Code, uh, the whole subject became somewhat cliched. So we've got to be very careful with that, even though it was our idea in the first place and we, we sort of created the zeitgeist. Um, because of the success uh, as a subject matter, it's almost become cliché. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's time to move on and think of something new and uh, research something new, which is hopefully what we're doing with this one. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, um, what is, is uh, I think, really interesting and something that I, I love is um, the idea of uh, Gnosticism, the Gnostics, and um, it all starts, the, disciple, the, the disciples of, of Jesus were sort of pretty much split into um, what we call Orthodox now, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, um, and, and the Gnostics, who were Mary Magdalene and Downton Thomas and Judas Iscariot, who obviously get a very bad rap. And even, even it would appear, in, during Jesus' time, sort of split. I don't know much about this, but in 1945, it's called Nag um, a huge treasure of, of Gospels written by uh, the Gnostics, um, including Mary Magdalene, including Thomas, were discovered. And the reason that they had been lost in so long was because they were considered heroic, and it, they all get destroyed. And um, particularly the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, interesting, because it talks about the idea of um, Jesus giving uh, secret information, special information to, to her um, and how cross Peter was that he wasn't included in all of this. And so uh, right from the beginning was this, this, this schism. Um, and then was the, the Orthodox Christians came to dominate and they, they, they declared that uh, Gnostics were correct. And then the persecution sort of continued right up until um, the third century when this extraordinary campaign, crusade, was launched uh, in Languedoc, which is uh, southwest France, um, where tens of hundreds of thousands of people were massacred. And so the basic question is, what was the church so afraid of and why? And, and, and that's what this game uh, seeks to explore. Wow. Good thing is, like the Templars, so you can research it. It's, you know, it's all real. It's all there. We're yeah. kind of keeping away, so you know, like, like, so we're bringing it out again. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's it's like I'm I always hated history and things like that, but I find these games really interesting. They make me want to research and read books and things like that that I wouldn't normally do. And that's so. great. That's you know we're very proud of the fact that you know a lot of people email us to say. Or post on Facebook to say that they love the games and you know they they, they, they travel to Paris and looking for uh, the locations or they research the history or um, and or indeed talk to some other and lots of other people have talked about their memories of playing the games. There's one that um, posted a Facebook message uh, a week or two back, which was so sweet. He was saying that um, he, he he really missed his grandmother who's you know, passed away quite some time. But enduring that was uh, taking him into a game shop and saying that you could buy everything she approved and, and he chose broken sword of course. <laughs> and they get that that whenever he got stuck he'd um, go and say, you know, I'm stuck, I'm stuck and she said, What have you done so far? And they'd go through it and they'd sort it together. And uh, really moving, really, really moving um, post to receive. Um, and it also shows actually that, you know, it's all right with the Daily Mail. Uh, and the staff um, looking down their noses at video games and interactive entertainment. But, you know, it's everything film or television or, or, or in the other ones. It's a, um, you know, people I think feel threatened and people don't understand. As I say, it's quite clear and a very important one culturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Street Captain, that's the best thing. So, another question is, does it follow on from Broken Sword 4, or is it, it, as it says it's a standalone game, so, but will it reference things from the original? The, the, sort of, the, the best reference is probably um, the Tim Tim books, where each one is absolutely standalone and you don't need to have read any previous ones to enjoy it, but they do reference, they do reference each other, right. so there might well be references to what happens. So, in theory, it is chronological, but each one is standalone. 
and Georgian, he could only get any older. Nobody gets any older. Right. Um, time moves on, but, but within people's lives, they're, they're static. Yeah, okay. Um, Current time, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. So, so of course, you know, mobile phones didn't exist um, in 1996, or, or didn't, they weren't massive, like that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we clearly want to keep in it. It's, yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, it's always the present day, but nobody ages. Okay. And will there be any reference to Broken Sword 2.5, the fan game? Uh, not really, no. no, because while we really admire them and we were thrilled to support them, um, that that game was sort of outside the universe. Mm -hmm. But that's not in any way to take away from what they did. They, they were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But, but we, we do consider that to be slightly to the side. Yeah, that's fair enough. And um, what your what were your original inspirations behind George and Mika? Were they people that you knew or social figures? Um, I think what what we wanted is we wanted we, we we learned very early on that you need two characters mm -hmm. because those characters like two cops. You know they need to talk to each other and they need to convey the story in the dialogue. So you always want two interesting characters, whether it be Rat Pouch and. Dermot, whatever his name was. Dermot, wasn't it? Yeah, Dermot. <laughs> or obviously Joey and Foster uh, and George and Nico. So it's it's a case when in coming up with stuff um, and new ideas uh, and new stories, two characters that will work well together. <coughs> and you know, in the same way that the Da Vinci Code had a, a, a an American bloke and a and, and, and a French girl set in Paris. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Get from. <laughs> um, yeah, we should, we? Exactly, probably so. Yeah, probably. Yeah, what's well, so, Yeah, yeah. So, so it just it, it, it just felt uh, it was nice um, juxtaposing, particularly since the French are always very wary of the Americans, and the Americans are wary of the French. It just felt like it set up. Mm -hmm. uh, will we see any of the old characters in the new game? Uh, you will. <laughs> Try not to give too much away, are you? <laughs> yeah, go then. <laughs> okay. Um, are you bringing the goat back? Yeah, he signed him. <gasps> I'd love to meet him. I presume it's a him. To meet you too. Oh, good. Well, let's make that happen. <laughs> um, will Broken Sword 5 be a point and click game? Yes. Yes, okay. And. Um, Good, good. And if Kickstarter had been around for Broken Sword 3 and 4, would you have done those in 2D? Ooh. Well, Kickstarter couldn't have been around for 3 and 4 because uh, Kickstarter absolutely relies on social media mm -hmm. and the ability to communicate with people through social media, which just simply wasn't possible then. No. But, but, but had it been, then, you know, theoretically, then, then almost certainly yes. Yeah. Was the reason why you did 3D because of restraints with contracts and things like that and the way that everything was going with the video it, It's games? sort of the way that it, everything was going and, and you know, without wishing to pass blame on too much, but the only way that we could get funding, the only way that we could get funding was to go down this, this route because, you know, they, they, even, even after Sword 1, Virgin didn't want to commission Broken Sword 2, mm -hmm. you know, we were you remember, we, we had to go down and do a presentation, and I was absolutely astonished that there was any doubt whatsoever. Uh, they showed us a little graph of the venture game sales going downwards, you know, and, and sort of 3D games going up upwards, and uh, this, was, this was the reason why we shouldn't be doing these kind of games and things like that. And, uh, you know, if you, can, if you take a very short term view, uh, Broken Sword probably didn't sell as many people in that, in that particular year in the 90s, but now, 20 minutes, 20 years later, we're still selling, but it's still really popular. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people love it still. So, in the long term, it's, uh, it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. The manager director taking me into his office and showed me a game, Future Shop. And he said, Charles, these are the games you should be right. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's Future Shop. Pardon? Sorry, you've broken up a bit then. Yeah, you remember it, don't you? What was that? Future Shop. Yeah, yeah. Inkling, you see. Yeah. <laughs> expert on all things video game, and even, even only he's only just heard of it. 
So, so we were, you know, the the the, um, the people who were running these companies were really, really out of touch with their audience, mm. and and remain so. And what's great is, you know, now we can communicate through social media, as I say, directly with our fans. Um, where before we had to convince a publisher to commission a game that they had confidence that in 12 to 18 months, once it was finished, a retailer would want to stock. So there were so many people down the chain, and um, ultimately the publisher's uh, primary audience or prime customer, of course, was the retailer. You know, for us, our, our audience are our, our game fans. So it's a much, much purer relationship, and it means that we can absolutely, because of the feedback, we, we absolutely know what people like and what they don't like. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that we're going to write a game that is, is based on you know, voting and um, you know, we'll, we, we know what we want to write and we're very to get responses and we're very happy to react to responses. Mm -hmm. But it can be written by, by the team um, with, with, in, with, 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 with very bad feedback from people, rock, written by everybody throwing ideas in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the middlemen that used to control these things are not really playing part anymore, which would give them to games, basically. Yeah, definitely. It's like before you sort of had to put the game out and then get the feedback, and now you can get it as you're working it along and change bits and tweak it to how it'll be better received. I remember we wrote, wrote games, you know, the, the big games. I don't think they did this, they did this for us once. They, they paid an awful, an awful amount of money to get more research. And um, mm -hmm. and of course now we have vast amounts of comments coming back, mm -hmm. uh, and we, we we get we get it, and and it's it's the two-way flow of information. It just works a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Um, will there be a demo of the game available before the actual game is released? Oh, that's a, a good question. Um, I think I think there will be a, a sort of pre-release beta for um, Legends. Yeah. We're talk, we're talking about that now. So it'd be good to show people. Where, where we're at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think what would be a disaster would be to give people beta copies of the game, which of course they'd play, uh, and they'd find all sorts of problems and they wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah, so it'd be like know. a preview, like a special yeah. preview. It won't be the beta that's falling apart, and I think like a true beta, it would be finished, um, and you'd be able to play it properly, but it'd be, you know, it won't be the whole thing, it'd be like the first screen or something. Mm -hmm. It'd be finished with enough time to go so that we can actually genuinely implement. Um, yeah. Changes that people feel are important. Mm -hmm. okay. And when is the actual release date for the game? So when is it? <laughs> well, well uh, it depends on the stretch goals, really. Um, you know, the, the bigger the game is, it may go back a little further, but it'd be a bigger, better game. So uh, we'll have to see. We don't, we don't know where we're going to finish yet on Kickstarter. What we promised is to send out um, the rewards in April. 2013. So we are determined to finish the game in the first quarter of 2013. Um, uh, as Tony says, as, as we've enlarged the game, so we're going to have to become more efficient um, and, and work hard uh, to, to, to hit those goals. But that's certainly what our objective is at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's still late before what we said, but um, you know, we will. Yeah, again, there's no publisher making this release it too early, say. So if we want to tweak it a little bit more, we, we will be able to. Yeah. Well, tell you one, one really, really wound us up for we as developers was when publishers would say, um, well, you need to re release it before the end of March because that's the end of our financial year. And we'd say, well, just because it's your financial year, why, why? And so all of these games were being released, even though it was totally the wrong time of the year. And even though it would too many games being released because publishers wanted to meet their end of the end of year targets and sometimes even because we were on and other games had slipped, we put the pressure to bring our games forward so that they could go into the publisher's financial year while the games were already accounted for had slipped out. I mean it was insanity. Oh, it's ridiculous. Um okay so that's it for the questions that I've got is there anything else that you'd like to add or any other secrets you'd like to share? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll leave that one with you. Um, secrets, um, uh, secrets are all in the game. Uh, yeah, <laughs> where, where, um, 
I mean, one of the one of the things about the Kickstarter, I have to say, is it's given us you know an enormous level of confidence that we really can write something special, and that there's a huge audience out there for it. Mm -hmm. um, working with publishers always leaves you a little bit insecure because they can cancel the game at any time. Obviously, they 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 manage the schedule very carefully. They they, they input on what they think the market wants. Um, it's an extraordinary situation that we're in now, and so it's, it's really lovely to be able to um, do it with people in this way, to get feedback, to react to feedback, and um, it's been an extraordinary experience. I know it's a different world, it's, it's totally, totally different yeah. than what we've been used to the last you know, decade or so. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Really. And the democratization of funding, so that, you know, um, funding does always go for the obvious first-person shooters, the obvious clones of GTA. Mm -hmm. uh, it is um, and of course there are always going to be clones of, um, of these popular genres, but you know, publishers again were absolutely throwing themselves headlong into you know, exactly the type of same type of games. Um, it, something had to change, and, and now it has. It's fantastic. So, look at well, I think, I think that was pretty much everything. Uh, just for most of us, anything else you want to ask us? No, no, that was it for the questions. Lovely. Okay. Well, I mean, keep up your um, your 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 your, your broadcasting. Um, <laughs> every, I mean, a lot of people talk about. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of fans. You've got uh, a lot of followers. Um, again, it's it's the way the world's changing, isn't it? It's yeah. extraordinary. Yeah, it is definitely. Um, oh, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to it, and I read every single update. So keep putting them out and. Set up the meeting with the goat. I'm really mm. looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank lovely. you so okay, much. Lovely. Well, great, great to talk to you. Thanks Bye. very much. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>